Congratulations, you've made it through level one and now you're at the beginning of level two. And really, this is the start of prepping before your test, your summative assessment at the end. Um, so this is one of the last new things and then you're gonna start prepping to take it already because this unit does not take us that long. So the last new thing you're gonna learn is how to use this thing called the distributive property. So if you look right here, we're talking about the distributive property. So what does this even mean? All right, I know this is gonna sound confusing. Bear with me, it will make more sense as we get through some of the examples. So the distributive property is when you can either multiply a number by a sum. We could say difference too, but we're gonna only focus on sum for this unit. So you can multiply a number by a sum. So like taking two times, and then let's say we had added three plus five together. So we could add that or multiply that number to the sum, and that's the same as if we were multiplying by each number in that sum and then adding. So I'll kind of write you out an example. So let's say I had two, like that one I said, times, and we use those parentheses for times, three plus five. So there's my sum, okay, and I'm multiplying a number by that sum. So if this is what I was doing, I would do the sum first, so I'm gonna do two times, I'm gonna do the sum part first, and I'm gonna get eight, because three, three, three plus five is eight, and then two times eight equals 16. Okay, so that's one way I could solve this problem. Okay, here's another way I could solve it. So I got the same problem, I got two times the three plus 15, or sorry, plus five I mean. And so what I could do instead, instead of adding these numbers together first and then multiplying like it says here, I could do two times three and then, I'm sorry, that was kind of a bad three. And then two times five, and then add them together. So two times three is six, plus my two times five, which is 10. And when I add those together, I also get 16. So see, no matter which way I did it, whether I added, so I got the sum and then multiplied, or if I multiply by each number in that sum and then add them, I still got the same thing. That's what the distributive property says, is that both of these things are exactly the same. It's just two different ways to solve the problem. So how does this connect to GCF? Well, we can um, rewrite an expression by um, using the GCF. So you'll see what I mean in an example here in a second. But the steps in order to do that, and I sure hope you had your pencil ready and you're filling in your notes like you know you're supposed to. Um, but the steps in order to rewrite a sum using the distributive property and the GCF is to first find the GCF between the two numbers. So you gotta first do that. And like I said, this will make more sense in our examples coming up. Once you find the GCF, you need to divide each number by the GCF. So basically you need to take that GCF out of there. We need to divide those numbers by it and pull that GCF out. Then we rewrite the sum, so we rewrite what is left over. And remember, if you ever miss the notes or need to take another look, feel free to pause or rewind to go back. But let's try this with some examples. So let's use the distributed property, and I've got the steps for those um, in order to rewrite the sum right up here in the top left. But let's try these, these examples in your packet. So the, it's asking us to rewrite the sum of the numbers as the product, product means multiplication, of their GCF and another sum. So right now, we've got 12 plus 16, and that's just a sum. But we could find the GCF between those two numbers, pull it out, and show it as a product, so multiplying it, by another sum. Let's do it together so you can see what we mean. So if I look at 12 and 16, the first thing I need to do to rewrite this sum is to find the GCF. So I'm gonna draw my division ladder, and I'm gonna look at 12 and 16 and try and figure out what could I divide them both by. Well, using my divisibility rules, 
I can definitely divide them both by 2 because they both end in an even number. But I think that 4 is probably going to be bigger. I think that's going to work. So I'm going to put my 4 on the outside here and make sure you're doing this right along with me. And 12, so now my second step was to divide each number by the GCF. So 12 divided by 4, I'm left with 3. And 16 divided by 4, I'm left with 4. Now 3 and 4 do not have any more common factors. The only thing they would have in common is 1, but so do all numbers, so I'm done. But, I'm not totally done, I'm done as far as finding my GCF. Now our last step says rewrite the sum. So let's do that. We need to write it as a product, so multiplying by the with the GCF and then another sum. So my GCF is 4, so I'm going to write that out here. And to show the product um, with this other sum, I need to put some parentheses. And inside those parentheses, I'm going to, now that I pulled that GCF out, now that I divided 12 and 16 by, the, by their GCF, which is 4, I'm going to write the leftover numbers, so 3 and 4, inside of my parentheses. But I started off with a sum, so I need to end with a sum. So I need to have my addition sign. So I started off with 12 plus 16, and I rewrote that sum as a product, so 4 times, which is their GCF, and another sum. So the product of 4 and another sum, their GCF another sum. And so I just took those leftover numbers, put them inside. Let's try one more just so you can see what I'm what we're getting at. So if I look at 42 and 24, again I'm rewriting the sum using the product or by doing a product of the GCF and another sum. So I gotta start by finding the GCF. Hmm. Well again, two definitely goes into both of these because they end in even numbers. But I'm gonna try and think if I can find something bigger. Hmm. I think 6 works. So I'm going to pull out 6. So 6 goes into 42 7 times. And 6 goes into 24 4 times. So I just divided both my numbers by the GCF. And when I look at 7 and 4, there are no more common factors between them other than 1. So to rewrite this sum, I'm going to put my 6, my GCF, on the outside. So I'm multiplying it, and I'm going to draw these parentheses, and put 7 plus 4 on the inside, because after I divided um, out my GCF, that's what I have left. So I started with 42 plus 24, and now I finished by re rewriting the sum as a product, multiplying, that's with the parentheses here, the GCF, and another sum. So that's really all you do. I know it sounds kind of complicated, but really when you break it down in pieces like this and you see it, it's not too bad. So feel free to go back, take another look at something. But moving forward, you have two pages here. The first one that is coming next, you have to try it. Okay, You have to try these. So this is what you're doing, right? Just what we did. You're finding their GCF, writing it out here. And whatever's left over is the other sum that you're writing. So you're going to try those problems. Don't forget to check with the answer key. But if you feel like you're not quite there yet, you might need a little more practice, there is an optional practice page that you could try a few more with if you would like. So you, those are your practice options. If you have any questions, make sure you change to either red or yellow, depending on the question. But otherwise, take these notes and go try it.